So we're going to start with the very back row, and it's got a gray sky surrounding the sun. So I'm going to mix French ultramarine with my Chinese orange to create gray. And if you're getting brown, you just need to add more blue. So I'm going to put the gray on the edges and keep a little sunspot there in the center. So I will do put down some paint and then with some water, I'll kind of blend it out into a soft edge so it fades out. And that center area where the white is, is the sun beaming through. So now I'm skipping a row down, just in case that other one's wet. I don't want all my rows to bleed into one another. We're trying to keep some separation. So I'm starting with that gray mixture. And then as I come up a little bit, I'm adding more blue to it with the French ultramarine. So then with just a damp brush, I will soften that edge and just have a nice gentle gradation there. And I'm not pulling it the same amount all the way across because the sun is blasting out that center area still. So here I come on top of the gray with some more French ultramarine. And I'm using my synthetic brush for this because it helps to control the amount of water more easily. And now I'm just dashing in a touch of phthalo blue to add a bit of a warm pop in there. So I dried all all the way in between so I can come in the middle here and not disturb my layers. And again, I'm starting with more of the gray mix and adding a little more French ultramarine. And then here's just one more little layer in between. And the closer a little lump in the snow here, we'll get even more blue. And then I'm going to create a cast shadow happening from the other side of this little hill here. So I've got just a soft mix with the French ultramarine and the phthalo a little bit. And then gently fade it out. So now I've dried completely and I've switched to my bigger mop brush. And I'm going to carefully wet this whole bottom third, two thirds I should say, and I don't want a big swimming pool here, I just want to get the water 
saturated or the paper saturated enough to stay wet the whole time. But when you're doing wet into wet, the paper, the water needs to soak into the paper a little bit, otherwise the pigments are gonna shoot out all over the place in an uncontrolled way. And also I'm working flat when I'm doing wet into wet so that it stays in place. And my first color, I'm dropping in some very light yellow, and that is just a tiny little bit of barely noticeable warmth, which is where the sun is hitting the strongest. But don't put your yellow too dark or it'll look like someone peed in your snow. Now I've got my cerulean and I'm gonna pull that around. And I'm not covering the whole thing because we want it to look like rolling hilly snow. So keeping some openings of just white. And I'm pulling these things like in a wavy shape. Making sure it is moist so there are no hard edges. And also be careful not to put too much water in your brush as you're laying down the pigment on the wet paper because if it starts drying on you and shoots back into an area that's drying, then you're going to get blossoms. So everything needs to be kind of evenly moist. Now after that layer, I'm going to add in a little bit of slightly grayed down French ultramarine. And I'm still, everything's still wet. And I'll add extra shadows here where these uh, trunks are coming out of the snow. And also remember when you're laying down these shadows that they're a little smaller in the distance and they become larger shapes as they get closer. So you don't want a whole bunch of little small brush strokes when you're getting near the foreground. And I'm keeping my sunny area clear and just that little bit of warmth. Now I'm getting a step darker here. And now I start pulling in some of the warmer blues with that phthalo. And the phthalo is mixed with the French ultramarine and a touch of orange so it is not too garish. And make sure you have nice, big, thick strokes in the foreground. So I just keep building it up and shaping it while it's wet and try not to go over things too much. Keep some white separation in there. 
So next we are mixing a gray with the French ultramarine and the orange and we're going to start with the very farthest trees and as they get closer to the sun area I'm blotting them so they become lighter and I want to get lots of trees in the background but still keep some openings so I'm not covering the whole thing sort of grouping things here and there with spaces for my bigger trees to come through. You know, those can go right on top, but you still want to be able to look through the things. So the trees, as they get closer and towards the outer edges, are much darker. And these ones start to have a little more detail with little extra branches. And this is why I sort of shaded in my sketch a little bit where the tree trunks are, where the main ones, just so that I had them nicely spaced and plotted out. It's easy to get too carried away with these. So here are a bunch of little sticks sticking up. And now I've mixed it as dark as I can, and that is with just barely any water in there, so. So I'm blotting some of these off a little bit and that gives that texture like it's got some bark. So you get really dark and then wet it a little bit and blot it. So I do a little bit of lifting off too. And then these ones that are in the very front foreground area, I'm even touching in a little bit of my Payne's Gray for an even darker dark at the base of the trunks.
Now I got all my nice trees in. Um, the next thing we do is put in their shadows. Oh, one more tree, sorry. So for the shadows, I'm going to use that kind of grayed down blue, but adding in some phthalo so that warms it up a little bit. So we got French ultramarine, orange, phthalo, and also I'm just cheating a little bit with throwing in some Payne's gray to gray it even more. So I found uh, this works best if you spritz that whole bottom third. You want kind of hard edges towards the top where the shadow meets the base of the trunk and then when it comes towards you, you want it to flare out and soften a bit. So if you pre-wet that area, it makes it a little easier to get that look. So this part is a little more challenging because you have to paint the tops of the trees. We're just upside down. And just remember to kind of get the branches to thicken and soften as they spread out and when they come towards you. And another thing to notice is the direction of the sun. So these shadows start out sort of straight down and as you get towards the sun area, they're going to start moving towards the right of the page. So you want to get that direction in your shadows. So I come and I soften and I add more water, add more paint, and just keep adjusting so that I always have plenty of variation in value, even in my shadows. And you want lots of wiggly branches to keep the shapes looking kind of nice and organic. Not too much repetition, so try to switch up directions and shapes. So now I'm reaching these other two. I'm going to start shifting more to the right side direction with my shadows. So that way you have some directional sunlight. Here, I gave it a good spray and it just makes it a lot easier.
Okay, so this one darts all the way over to the other corner. And you see the ripple moves. I'm trying to make the shadows ripple like that so it looks like they're on lumps of snow. So as you get closer to the edge of the paper over here, these ones start getting easier because you don't have quite so many branches to put in. So I'm just dashing in a couple extra darks towards the foreground. And then don't forget to add some little shadows coming down the hills from those other guys that are in the second layer. And those shadows are lighter than the trees in the front. Keep them farther away. And lastly, I've got my little liner brush out and with just straight Payne's gray, I'm gonna have some of these little sticks sticking up in the foreground out of the snow. And they're dark, but they're delicate. And for these guys, I'm also using the Payne's Gray on the shadow too. These ones, the shadow is dark, and but it's still long, so make it longer than the actual stick that is making it. And remember to try to keep a similar shape in the shadow.
so now we're trying to keep that same pattern of light going so start shifting those shadows over to the right And there you go.